Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you. <laughs> I'm always glad to see you. And today we have a very interesting topic. It's Introduction to Bio-Risk Management Performance. And I remain Dr. Ia Zebasi, your host. Please enjoy this lecture. Thank you. So like I said, we're going to be like I said, we'll be dealing today with introduction to bio-risk management performance, very interesting topic. And as usual, our lesson objectives will be that I would need you to be able to understand that performance ensures that mitigation is appropriate and is working as intended, and that it involves evaluating the success and shortcomings and setting new goals for continually improving they are continually improving the system, and therefore it leads us back to assessment. And there are many benefits to measuring performance. Get to know that, and that bio risk management performance should be measured and evaluated against established goals and objectives. Before we enter into the lecture, fun facts. <laughs> I was just going through the internet and I saw something. I'm like, come on. Baby goats are called kids. So why are human children called kids? I found, I found a very funny answer already and I modified it. It said that historically, the original definition of the word kid is a baby goat. So whoever started calling human children that probably didn't like kids and they started around the 1500s. And they didn't like kids probably because those kids were jumping about the sitting room like goats. They were chewing everything, probably the chairs and knocking down everything <laughs> inside. All right. I wish to say thank you so much for your support. Our channel has many videos. Uh, we deal with health issues, academic issues, as well as lectures that are very important to medical students. So I want you to please like, share, subscribe, and comment to these videos if you haven't. Thank you very much. So let's get back and remind ourselves that the model, the AMP model, uh, is the model that we use in virus management, and it's called the Assessment Mitigation Performance Model, and it's made up of these um, three components. And uh, I would like us to remind ourselves what these three components are. Remember that assessment is the process of identifying the hazards and evaluating the risk associated with biological agents and toxins, taking into account adequacy of any existing controls and deciding whether or not risk are acceptable. When you have assessed and you have determined what type of risk are there, next thing you will carry out is your mitigation. And your mitigation are the actions and the control measures that are put in place to reduce or eliminate risk as associated with biological agents and toxins. We've done a video on bio-risk management assessment. Just look in the bio-risk management series, you'll find it. We've also done a video on mitigation. Very interesting video. Please look it up. Then performance now, which is what we're doing, is the implementation of the entire bio-risk management system, including evaluating and ensuring that the system is working the way it was designed. Another aspect of performance is the process of continually improving the system. So it's not just static, you assess, you implement, go back, look again, is it working? And then if it's not working or there's room for improvement, you now improve it. So let's look at the barrier system, the barrier pyramid rather. The goal of the barrier management itself is to identify and reduce risks before they evolved into misses or near, near misses rather, or incidents you don't want happening. So we have this pyramid that looks like this, where you have unsafe and secure conditions being at the bottom of the pyramid. You have near misses, like when you're in, due to things like improper use of uh, PPE. And then you have harmful incidents like um, laboratory associated infections, all right? So you find that this pyramid looks like this, and that is the virus pyramid. Concept of performance. Wow. So what's the concept of performance? What's this performance? Like I said, it is the way in which a virus management system actually functions to manage 
or minimize bio risk. So let's take an example. We have different kinds of cars. You have your Homer Jeep, you have your Lexus, you have your Toyota, your Honda, you have your Oxygen. You have different kinds of cars. And each of these cars, there are indicators that tell you that, oh, this car is performing. There are some cars that you would um, throttle and throttle and throttle. And it doesn't give you that speed, you know, that you should have if you're throttling that much. There are some cars that will not start up on time. There are some cars that make noise like as if they are grinding machines. You know that those cars are not doing well. But there are some cars that you drive, you know, the steering is so soft, just throttle a little bit and wow, the car is so quiet. First, when you're moving, that indicates that the car is doing well. So we do have things called performance indicators. So we look at the characteristics of a BRM system performance. BRM performance is a result of all the activities and the efforts of all the people, all the people from the CEO down to the cleaner. You know, all of them uh, take part in BRM performance. So if you have problem with one aspect of the laboratory or the facility, have problem in BRM performance. And then actual BRM system performance may not match the planned level risk management effectiveness. This is because this is why we have a performance management to assess, you know, when you see it in the magazine, it looks very nice, very interesting, it looks very fine. But on ground, because these things are managed by human beings, you could have differences in you know, performance. And you should know that performance changes over time. A car you buy today that is wonderful may not be working that well in the next five years. All right, so performance changes over time. And you need a sustained level of performance to, you need a sustained level of effort to keep performance. All right, so what are the benefits of performance why do we need to do brm performance uh one of the good things about brm performance is that determines which parts of the brm system is functioning are people wearing their ppe are the engineering controls working uh administrative uh policies are they being carried out you know are they being enforced it also provides a demonstrable record of system performance you know so it actually may help a facility during their certification or accreditation processes because you have been carrying out BRM performance, when it comes to that period, it's no more hard again. It also helps to identify areas for improvement by using a consistent framework, you know, the framework that we do have, uh, the provides assurance that the risk is acceptable. It facilitates the maintenance and sustainability of the system. A lot of things we do today collapse because we do not have a maintenance culture, but when you do have BRM performance in a facility, it helps you to maintain, you know, and sustain the system. And also, if you do it over time, it may look expensive, but over time, two, three, five, ten years, you'll know that it can actually save you money because your equipment don't break down, don't have lawsuits. No, losses can drain a lot of money. <laughs> it also <laughs> prevents incidents, you know, from happening. Once incidents begin to happen in your lab, people are afraid to patronize the place. People are afraid to work there, you know, and all that. So it's good to know that mitigation is not perfect because if you're just using one mitigation measure alone, it may have so many weaknesses that will result in undesired consequences. And we can actually see this using the Swiss cheese mosaic. You can see the Swiss cheese here with a lot of holes. And the holes represent inadequacies of failures, okay, that are associated with that particular mitigation measure alone. And each of these holes can allow a situation involving a hazard of treat to um, result in consequences that you do not desire and these holes can be latent or they can even be actively created by people in fact they evolve 
Sometimes the holes that were not there before now begin to come out. Sometimes the holes that were small begin to get bigger with time, which is why we need a performance, various uh, mitigation performance. And that is another reason also why we do not use just one mitigation measure. Usually the bioreast um, performance requires that we use multiple layers of mitigation so that even though we cannot get rid or eliminate the risk, we can at least reduce the likelihood of that risk occurring and resulting into either near misses or incidents, which we don't want to have. So, put it in mind that using multiple models is good, but because each of these models or each of these um, control measures have their weaknesses, you may have a weakness which runs through all the models you're using and can also result into a hazard causing a consequence. So, the only way you can eliminate risk is removing the hazard entirely from laboratory, which we know in most cases is not really possible. So what are examples of possible hopes in bioreast mitigation measures? Like using inadequate mitigation controls, for example, how would you use face masks instead of respirators or N5, especially when you're working with an uncertified um, basic uh, safety cabinets? No, that will not protect you against aerosolized agents. Another thing is that relying on just one mitigation <laughs> control measure, for instance, if you're like um, concentrating on administrative, you know, controls, policies and procedures. And seriously, when you're there, these lab workers are like angels. They follow the rules. They do everything. Immediately you leave the lab or you're on your own. <laughs> so those kind of things are goals. You can have a situation where, yes, everybody is following the rules, but this particular person or persons will never obey the rule. They are always hiding food inside the fridge. When you're not there, the supervisor, they bring it out, they eat. Uh, they keep saying that the lab coat is very hot, you know, or they wear their hair very long so that they can take selfies. You know, those kind of people can cause problems for you. So <laughs> what are the questions that are addressed by performance by this performance they are they address things like where are the holes in the system layers all right that hole through which you know a consequence cannot occur. where are these holes in the system layers and how big or how small are these holes have they grown big over time i told you that such holes evolve over time or are there new holes forming over time? If you've worked with the system over time, you can have wear or tear, one or two things that will result in new holes forming over time. And then is the risk management system working as intended to, to obstruct potential paths leading to adverse consequences? You need to check, you need to check, you need to check. All right? So I want us to look at a very funny, but very pathetic story. And I, I just want you to review this performance scenario and identify the performance issues and problems and record them in the comment section. I will mark them later. All right, so an employee of a waste transport disposal company was dis diagnosed with TB, that's tuberculosis, and he reported that he contacted TB from biohazard bags from the local TB reference lab too where he regularly works, okay, with TB. And after an investigation, he actually acknowledged that during the same period, he visited relatives and went to public places in the country where TB was endemic. One of his relatives in that country had just started TB treatment when he visited. And the laboratory did not even know about this infection until it was notified of this person's pending lawsuit, which claimed that the, uh, the facility had not sufficiently treated the waste and that the waste leaked from the bags that he carried, causing his exposure and infections. Okay? So laboratory tests on the samples from his lungs did not clearly point to a laboratory waste exposure. However, Records of the autoclave used were kept by the lab, which included the date, the time, the temperature, the pressure of each autoclave run. But upon review of the lab notes, including the period under question, some of the records were missing. 
have. Staff seem to think that, well, this may have been maybe because the autoclave printer ran out of paper on the days, or the records may have been displaced or lost. Six months prior to this incident, during an internal audit, it was recognized that the autoclave printer records were kept in a drawer that was also used to store disposable laboratory supplies. See trouble. The laboratory manager will determine that these records should be better organized and stored in a more appropriate and secure location. So she assigned this task to one of the technicians. But before the technician could organize and secure the records, he was transferred to another laboratory and no follow-up was made. The laboratory reported that the occasionally performed a validation of the autopsy strips but the review of the record indicated that one in three of this validation showed positive results, which is spore growth after autoclave. This should not happen. Nothing should grow after autoclave. So the lawsuit resulted in a $5 million, $5 million fine laboratory because the laboratory could not prove conclusively that the waste was treated appropriately as stipulated in contract with waste transport and disposal company. Five billion dollars. Do you know what this can do to your life? You are free for life. And the laboratory had to pay because of carelessness. So I want you to pick out the performance issues, the problems they had, and put them down in comment comment for me. All right. So what are the potential measurement methods? Your audits and inspections your performance indicators, observations that you make personally, interviews, surveys, and questionnaires are potential measurement methods. So having gone through all that, I want to ask how does performance improve bio-risk management? You should know that one, it lets you know that your system works and not just that it works, it is sustainable and the risk is acceptable. Two, performance leads to a continuous improvement. It does this by identifying gaps and measuring whether the virus measurement, uh, virus mitigation goals, uh, virus management goals rather, are met. And performance includes establishing goals and benchmarks. If you do a performance and it's working well, you set new goals, you go higher, you go better. All right? And Finally, you should know that assessment identifies and characterizes the risk. We've done it that. Just look at the bio uh, series and then it characterizes the risk, right? Then mitigation is another video on that too, reduces the risk while performance decides how the system functions. It indicates whether or not mitigation is working and leads back to assessment in a continual improvement loop. So if you've learned all this, then you would have learned the very purpose of doing a bio risk management. Thank you very much. Stay well, stay blessed.